Well, 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 welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick Extra Kick Podcast. Hey, Runners Connect fans, welcome to another episode of the Run to the Top Extra Kick Podcast. Michael here to answer your training and racing questions. We specifically assigned today's question to me as I have a lot of experience in this realm. We're going to talk about running with your dog. First, a quick shout out to Enduro Packs, our sponsor this week. With high temperatures in this long summer, it's important that you replace the essential vitamins and minerals you lose through your sweat. But how can you stay hydrated and replenish your electrolytes without all the unnecessary calories and additives in sports drinks? Enduro Packs is a fast acting liquid made by runners for runners that provides natural, vegetable based nutrients to help you get the most out of your training. Just squirt a little into your water bottle and off you go. Everything you need and nothing you don't for improved blood flow, muscle contraction, and overall health. Its subtle lemon flavor goes with everything, and I absolutely love the way it makes me feel. See for yourself at runnersconnect.net slash enduropacks. Okay, on to today's question from James. I like to run with my dog, a Labrador Retriever, but I want to make sure I'm getting my training in correctly. Any advice on training with your dog? So I love this question, and honestly, I'm to the point where I really don't like running without my dog. I've been doing it for quite a while now and really, really enjoy it. feel like it makes runs go by so much faster, just so much more enjoyable when I have my dog out there. Plus, he loves it. Gets him some great exercise. So I have a lab pit bull mix. He's actually an incredible running partner, and I'm absolutely happy to to share some tips today. So first off, ideally, you're going to run with your dog on easier runs and long runs. This probably sounds pretty obvious, but workouts are definitely going to be a little tough. So easy runs, long runs, those are usually going to be a lot easier on you and on your dog because you're going to be just kind of running mostly the same speed, not going to have any big changes in pace throughout the run. And overall, it's just going to make it a lot easier if you're running just the easier runs and long runs. Workouts can probably be done, but to be honest, I I haven't had great experiences trying it. Maybe like fart licks and, and tempos. But if you're, if you're on a real fast speed session, then I would generally recommend not trying to do that with your dog just because it's going to be tough. If you can get an area that's pretty you know, open and doesn't have a lot of foot traffic, then hey, go for it. But otherwise, typically stick to the easy runs and the long runs. So real quick, let's talk about leash versus non-leash. So I have to mention first off, you have to make sure it's legal if you're going to let your dog off your leash. There are a lot of places that will actually fine you if you have your dog off your leash, which is actually a pretty good rule because, you know, in the end, unless you have total control, we don't really know what's going to go on with the dog or if somebody doesn't like them, whatever. Either way, you got to abide by the local rules. So make sure you're always down with that. Now, if you can train them off leash very, very well, and again, it's legal, that's obviously going to be best. It's just nicer for you. You don't have to actually hold a leash. And another issue with holding a leash is that you're actually going to slightly alter your form not going to be anything that's going to make a huge impact unless you're doing it every single day, severely changing your form. But basically if you're holding a leash, obviously it's going to be kind of pulling on your arm a little bit. And you know, it's definitely not the best thing to do. So again, if you can train them off leash very, very, very well, I mean, total control, then that's definitely going to be best. I'd I'd recommend at least considering a GPS collar. Basically what this is, several different companies make them. I know Garmin makes one. And what it does is it basically has, it sends, you know, like a beacon that you can pick up with your phone or with a device that maybe it comes with. And in addition, what these will have a lot of the times, they'll have maybe like a vibrate or shock feature. I know that sounds intense, but hey, if if you're talking about, especially if you're running on the road and maybe there's a car coming, that could be very, very helpful if you're, especially if you're doing off leash, even if they're on the leash and maybe they, they get off or you accidentally let go of the leash then something like that could definitely come in handy. But of course, the GPS feature could really come in handy because of, you know, you don't want to lose your dog and you want to make sure you know exactly where they are. So that could definitely come in handy. Now, in terms of training, you know, heel is the number one. You got to teach your dog to heel. If your dog doesn't know how to heel, then really you shouldn't even be running at all, but certainly not off leash. Heel is absolutely number one. You need to get to the point where your dog will walk either walk either directly beside you or right behind you. Almost that's almost more ideal if you're talking about like single track trails. But this needs to be done very very well. You need to make sure that your dog can heal perfectly on leash and off, even off leash. To practice a little bit off leash because that'll make sure that they really know how to do it and they're not just making sure that the line of a leash is isn't tight. You also need a safe word. So 
something like for me, what I do with my dog, I just yell stop. If I yell stop really loud, then my dog just freezes. He just, he knows that that means something is serious. So that's the only time I use that. I try to keep that pretty spare because obviously you want to save it for, you want to train it. Of course, you want to train your dog very well to understand the word, but at the same time, you really do want to save it for the times that you really need it. So what I would recommend doing is, you know, train your dog to do it. Basically, you want to yell it really loud, like stop. You want to yell it very loud to where they almost get like a little frightened by it and frightened by the tone of your voice to the point where they just stop. And that's eventually, then you reward that and they're going to learn that that's the right way to go. And something like that obviously comes in handy when you're talking about running because even if they're on the leash, let's say they get off. Let's say they pull a little hard and, and you let go and they're running towards the car. If you have your safe word, that's really going to come in handy. Stay is, of course, a very important one because at some point you're going to need to stop or maybe you're going to need to use the bathroom and you need your dog to wait for you. Whatever it is, stay is obviously important. Then I'd also recommend train them, give them some sort of command that's going to help them to, to know to get off the trail. So if you're, if you're on more single track trails or even like a bike path, you're going to deal with bikers. You're going to deal with people running fast towards you. Uh, especially bikers, because they're, the they're the most dangerous. So you need to have some way of training your dog to get off the trail. I don't know what word exactly works. I think mine, I literally just yell like off. And my dog just happens to know to kind of jump off. And I jump off too, so he just follows me. That's what's going to happen most of the time. But nonetheless, you don't want your dog to be in the way of a bike or whatever's coming at you. You want to make sure they have a good command that will help them get off the trail. So again, to reiterate, training is key. You have to train the key commands like heel, stay, and then again, a safe word to make sure that your dog doesn't, you know, get in danger by traffic or bikes or anything like that. Make sure that it's legal to where you're running. And sometimes there are places that you're not even allowed to have dogs at all. So just make sure that whatever you're doing is legal, especially if you're trying to run them off leash. There are off leash dog parks and trails, but you just want to make sure that what you're doing is legal. So you don't get a fine or anything like that. Consider a GPS collar because it really can come in handy. And then the last thing, as I mentioned, was make sure you're ideally doing it for easier long runs, maybe some tempos, steady runs, but shorter speed work, probably best to leave the dog at home. Okay, Runners Connect fans, that's it for today. Be sure to check out Enduro Packs made up of the nutrients you need by runners for runners. Go to runnersconnect.net slash Enduro Packs. See you next time.